Ron William uh, uh, speaking in collaboration with Alpha Chain Capital. Um, trading Psychology is, is the course number three uh, of a six-part webinar series. Let's, let's just quickly dive in in the time that we have. Uh, the key learning objectives for today, uh, mistake culture, why rising market volatility will pressure our mindset. I really want to focus more on um, not just the psychological side of trading, but also the environmental influences uh, that are changing the dynamics. The power of now, learn how to fail forward. Uh, so the whole idea about letting go of your mistakes, uh, no matter how bad or emotionally charged they are, and actually moving forward into the present and the future. Uh, this isn't just a, a mindful mantra. It's very much something that a lot of high-performance traders embrace over time. Review common mistakes in our psychology, strategy, and risk money management. It's always just those three key areas. And then lastly, three key steps to overcoming your trading mistakes, some of which will overlap from previous work that we've discussed. But I also really want to open this up to each of your own experiences as to what works best for you. Maybe we can all learn from each other uh, just through sharing uh, different ideas. Now, I want to ask the open question. What stops a trader from the path of change and transformation? Uh, can anyone tell me, just a, a, as a quick open survey question, what stops a trader from the path of change and transformation? Anyone? Why can't we all be successful traders right here, right now, just push that big microwave button and get it all done with? Or, you know, have a one-day session at ACC at Alpha Chain Capital and, and, and be the best traders we can be. Why is it so difficult? I've asked this question within the you know, opening webinars, but can anyone just give me a quick fire answer? Fear of failure, wrong mindset, beliefs, absolutely. So there's a whole lot there. I'd say fear of failure is quite big and fair in itself is, 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 a, is a big point in itself. Um, ultimately, in keeping with the theme of this webinar, it's all about the mistakes that we make uh, and, of course, what those mistakes lead to. And the textbook definition of a mistake is an act or judgment that is misguided or wrong. For example, trading without a trading plan is a big mistake. So for those of you who have ever traded without a trading plan, every mistake you make, uh, sorry, every, every trade action you take is a mistake. For those of you who are trading without a trading plan, I'll say it again, every decision you make is a mistake. So really, trading where the plan is a plan to fail. Um, and of course, some of you already have your trading plans that maybe don't follow it. It's kind of a similar outcome, uh, but a different, different journey to it. Uh, the issue with mistakes is, is there's a big culture for loss of face and fear of failure. This is something that really begins with the childhood kind of um, uh, story uh, and then evolves through the, the education system uh, imagine the number of times that you may have passed or failed an exam. It's not really something that is um, treated in the best way possible. And so we're continuously conditioned, both culturally and environmentally, to not make mistakes and to not fail. And so just imagine that lifetime of learning conditioning you not to fail, not to make mistakes. So when you become a trader, you think, okay, it's all about make, being right as opposed to making money. Whereas, of course, you'll know that to be successful in the market, it's more about making money and not being right all the time because by definition, you're going to get it wrong sometimes more than half of the time. Hence why people take a kind of a conservative risk, money, risk and money management position because they know they can get it wrong 50% of the time. But so long as they uh, uh, let their winners, win, uh, winners run and cut their losses short, they've, they've got more of a chance of A, keeping the account alive, and B, making consistent returns. So really, this whole idea of mistake culture, loss of face, and, and fear of failure is an issue. Uh, think about what that does when you then start trading for the first time, or even if you're a seasoned trader, uh, how that might influence any of the natural mistakes that you will likely make, especially if you're going to get more than half of the trades wrong. Now, big question I want to open to all of you. I think quite a few of you already answered this question, but just as a show of you know, humility and, 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 and learning so we can share together as, as, a, as, a, as a community of traders who want to learn and be the best that we can be. How many of you have made trading mistakes? Can I get a quick show of hands? 
Danny's saying yes. Mitch is saying absolutely. Great. Okay. And for those of you who haven't answered subconsciously, you can kind of answer to yourself whether you have or you haven't. But really, the first step is acknowledging the fact you made a mistake. Speak to Gavin, speak to Adam, Adam and, and you know, specifically speak directly with your mentors uh, and with your training buddies. And just, just be upfront about it. Acknowledge it. And most importantly, take responsibility for it. Okay. Now, what type of trading mistakes do we all make? Before we go there, let's talk about the environment for trading mistakes and how things have changed since the last few years, particularly since 2018. I want you to all know that as a community of traders that are doing your best to be peak performance traders, uh, but by doing so, you're going to acknowledge your mistakes and be the best you can be by learning from those mistakes. You're going to join a whole global community of top line traders. Um, that are all in good company. We're all kind of uh, on the same page, making similar mistakes, particularly in the last few years, because the new normal now is higher volatility. And in a higher volatility environment, people need to adapt. The key buzzword is adaptation. And one of the big environmental mistakes that traders make is not being adaptable to the market environment. So not all trading mistakes are psychological, Sometimes they're environmental. They're not adapting to uh, the environmental changes. And this is a fundamental uh, trap that people fall into and actually did from 2018 onwards. Let me explain by showing you this market chart of a volatility proxy. Some of you already know the VIX, uh, which is a, a futures market uh, represent a proxy for the S&P 500. It measures volatility in the US equity market. So there you can see two big spikes uh, in 2018. Uh, we had the Q1 2018 volatility margin call. That was the flash crash of uh, uh, Feb 2018, where we had a 1,600 point sell-off on, on the US equity markets, Dow Jones index in particular. Uh, that was 15, 1,600 point sell-off in just 15 minutes. So you can just see just extreme kind of a flash crash volatility that we had then. Uh, that was then followed by a much meaningful and prolonged uh, set-off in the market, and that was during Q4 2018, what I call the top of the pops, rest in peace. Any momentum trend is your friend uh, trades, uh, including um, high growth uh, tech stocks like the FANG complex, Facebook, Apple, uh, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, now Alphabet, all fell out of the sky and, and pretty much had a, a sharp uh, uh, correction. So these were the two kind of shocks to the system in 2018, which told us there was a new normal, and that new normal uh, elevated volatility and more meaner version. Now, Warren Buffett, who I like to quote from time to time, along with other successful investors and traders, has this wonderful quote, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. Only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. Now, my interpretation of that is think of volatility like the tide. When the tide goes out, when you're swimming in the water and you know, you're know you covered by the water, no one really knows what you're wearing underneath, right? Sorry to pick on this kind of uh, uh, strange and memorable innuendo, but, but there's a meaningful message here. It's only when the tide goes out, i.e. when volatility rises, that, you know, we're all exposed, whether we're trading without, you know, with poor risk or money management. Uh, for example, we're not trading with good stops or we're tra trading with too high leverage. We're not trading with a trading plan at all. Um, whatever mistake it might be, in a high volume environment, we get exposed and, and ultimately you, it usually leads to negative equity and, and um, not the best psychological uh, environment for us, for ourselves. Different from trading, but of course the crossover is high performance uh, uh, you know, you know, professions, whether it's sport, whether it's uh, soldiers in, in, in the battlefield. Uh, what we all share together is high performance uh, work. And what he says, despite his big fame and his big success, he missed more than 9,000 shots in his career. 9,000. Imagine that and translate it into trading uh, reality. He's lost more than 300 games, 26 times he's been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. 
lost 300 games, not just 9,000 shots, 300 games, 26 times he's been trusted to take the game-winning shot and miss. Imagine the level of, you know, dis, you know uh, disappointment and negativity and self-sabotage that could have happened to any one of us if this was a trading reality. And then he ends off by saying, I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Now, I know this sounds like a kind of positive pick-me-up uplifting quote that I'm reading to you, which is a real quote from a real, you know, genius success story in the sports world. But I, I really want to engage all of you here to kind of focus on what this means, you know, this whole idea of what I call failing forward. Failure is part of the process of success. It's, it's one of the same. It's, it, as we say here in Asia, uh, in the time that I'm here, it's part of the yin-yang uh, uh, combination balance. Um, to, to, to ignore it and to not accept it, by definition, is, 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 is holding back your, your true potential, holding back your learning, and really not being accountable for, for the lessons that we're going to learn, which is going to make us a successful trader, or, or, or not just trading, anything in life. Failing forward is the real concept here, and this idea that you know, success can look amazing on the outside, but the reality is a lot of the most successful traders out there have gone through the hard work. And the hard work, last time I checked with most of the traders I work with, but also other successful people in, in, in many other industries, they go through, guess how many hours of, of, of practice? What's the general rule of thumb? How many hours of practice for you to master any industry in the world? 10 hours, 100 hours, 1,000 hours? What do you think the magic number is? It's actually 10,000 hours. That's the general rule of thumb. Um, if you want to master any particular discipline that you can imagine, 10,000 is generally seen as, as like the, the, the big magic number. That's it for this webinar. So uh, any questions, please fire um, uh, uh, online on Slack. And ultimately, I want you all to consider what is your trading edge. Um, if you're new to the uh, Alpha Ch uh, Capital Ch uh, program and you haven't yet worked out what your trading edge is, that's fine. I just want you to at least consider what you think your trading edge to be. That's it from me. Thank you so much for your engagement. Hope you've benefited from this webinar session. Um, happy trading. And please remember, trading psychology is the key to your success. Thank you very much. Ron William, signing off here in Hong Kong. Bye-bye.